welcome back to the veg garden. So today's video I'll be talking about growing vertically and using trellises to get the most out of your growing space. So to start off with I'm going to talk about uh, growing vertically using containers. So this could be using um, either like a stacking container method. Um, so you can buy pots that are like three pots stuck together in a um, almost like a triangle and then they stack uh, alternately uh, and these are really good for growing herbs and strawberries and things like that uh, there's also like the clay pot versions that I've got um, and they're just a big pot uh, a cylindrical pot with holes made in the sides of them for you to plant through uh, and then there's the strawberry planters that actually have like a, a cup coming out of them where they slit a hole and then pull the clay out uh, and these are a lot better because you're not planting through a hole in the side and just relying on gravity and how much you've compacted the compost to hold in you've actually got a cup to hold the compost um, you could also make your own so I made my own with milk bottles last year and screwed them to uh, one of the panels um, you could also use gutters like I've got here for peas but you could um, put strawberries in the gutters uh, if you get the deep guttering um, that's even better so I've got some strawberries in deep gutters um, just over there so we could buy a system like the veg truck wall planter uh, and this could be used um, to be screwed to a wall to grow herbs and stuff um, but all I'm going to say about all these methods is make sure you use a really moisture retentive mix um, because you really don't want these little volumes of soil to dry out quickly otherwise you'd be forever watering them and there's no point um, even attempting vertical gardening and that's the problem I faced last year is I was using um, a 50-50 mix of compost and garden soil and I noticed that it was drying out far too quickly so this year I'm just using compost and um, I've been putting a layer of nearly fresh manure on the bottom because manure is quite sticky when it's nearly fresh and it's these gels that make it sticky that can actually hold a lot of moisture so if you put like a, a almost like a bowl in the bottom like a layer um, it can form like a, a dish to catch the water and hold it but also if it gets excessively moist it will drain through um, so it just moderates the amount of water in the pot uh, so now I'm going to talk about experiments of vertical growing that I'm doing. Um, one is a 45 gallon drum vertical food forest. Um, this has been planted up last year, um, but the side containers didn't really come that well, so I'm going to replant them this year. Uh, and it's a it's a good way if you've got a small space of growing a lot of perennials, to towers made out of um, mesh similar to this but a bit more of a rounding um, and I'm hoping to fill these with manure and straw and make um, like a tower that I can grow potatoes in and put like four uh, potatoes in one layer go up 20 centimeters with mulch and do another four and hopefully they'll come out the side so I might grow uh, 20 strawberries in the space, uh, 20 potatoes in the space of, of four if you were just growing in ground. So that's a lot more potatoes, five times more potatoes hopefully, in the same ground if it works, that is. Um, now I'm going to move on to trellises. Um, now I use quite a few trellises around the gardens, different types. I've got reclaimed ones made out of old clothes, um, wraps. Um, I've got like this one here, this is ideal for taller peas, um, cucumbers, these grow really well, uh, good cucumbers, this chaff that's all intertwined around this one is actually cucumelon, um, and that's what was on it last year is cucumelons, so they like um, a wire mesh like this. Uh, you can even grow runner beans at mesh like this. Uh, it's just when they get to the top, you've got to sort of wind them back down, even though they don't like going downhill. 
uh, you sort of wind them down the hill. Uh, old style bush cucumbers or trailing cucumbers. Um, you can even grow like squash, winter squash up wire. Um, but what you have to do with that is support the fruit with like an old t-shirt, a um, long sleeve t-shirt if you tie the sleeves round um, and then use the body to support the fruit. Wigwams can also be um, cheaper on canes because you don't need a ridge cane uh, like an A-frame um, but they are harder to plant because you're not going in a straight line. With an A-frame you could just move down the line in a straight line whereas with a wigwam you're doing lots of circles. Um, they're also less efficient on space because you've got the corners that you're wasting all the time um, but you could plant in these corners to save that space. Um, they could be pre-tied and then pre-stored as a bundle of canes and then you could just open them out, push them all in and leave them and then in the winter you could just pick them all up and keep them tied together whereas an A-frame you'd rather pull the ridge off and pull all the individual canes down into a pack every year. So wigwams could be faster to get uh, year on year. With either an A-frame or wigwam if you put string round it then either just like cord like this or um, like a jute string, uh, you can grow peas up it because the peas will catch on to the, uh, the, the strings uh, or alternatively you can grow around the beans if you just leave the canes so they're quite dual purposed um, in fact anything will grow that climbs will grow up a wigwam if you put string on it and um, be a really good way of holding everything secure as well um, mesh like this is really good um, in rounds but you can also use it in straight lines um, almost more like a fence then if you put two posts in and pull the fence um, fencing wire between the two posts and then you can grow peas up that or you can use string even and you can either use the string just two straight lines between posts to put peas down the middle or what you could do if you were growing like tomatoes or sweet corn between posts is you could weave the string round each plant back round and do what they call a florida weave so you're um, plaiting plants into the weave um, and this keeps them growing straight and secure um, I won't go too long and make sure there's a post every um, about four, three to four meters, I'd say. Otherwise, your strings start to sag on one way or another, and you have to get more and more tension on it to keep it um, secure. And if you put too much tension, you'll just snap all the plants in that row. Uh, so you ideally want to keep um, your posts quite close. I did last year. I did about ten meters between posts. And the strings were sagging under the weight of all the peas and the peas never got that tall and never came of much. Um, I had a good crop but they were, they were digging under all the peas because they collapsed over and it was a mess really. Uh, it didn't work as well as I was hoping to. Um, but hopefully this year I'll just use shorter roads for a start and um, that combined with a lot more rounds of mesh and I should have some nice uh, peas this year. The topic of growing vertically, there is also um, some varieties of plants that grow taller than others. So for instance this is Thanover peas and these go to 6 foot or 1.5 meters tall uh, in comparison to these peas here that only go to 2 feet tall or 60 centimeters. Um, or you've got these cabbages here, which are Austerian tree cabbage, which can in some climates get up to uh, 10 foot tall, which is nearly three, uh, just yeah, just around three meters tall. Um, and you just pick off the leaves and they, they'll live for about three to four years. So you can have a lot of space underneath once the cabbage is around eye level. All that ground underneath is available again apart from where the stump is itself 
so you could then plant right up to the cabbage stalk with radishes and beetroot, carrots, anything that is meeting down. It doesn't need too much top space because you've essentially created like a topiary um, out of a cabbage. So that'll save a lot of space because once you've planted, it's only the first year that these cabbages will take the space of the bed up. And if you were clever then and put like four cabbages there and then the following year you sow another four and put them in between, when these th four die off uh, in two years time, these four will replace it. So only one year will you have cabbages quite close and then the following year and then you can alternate them like that then. Um, so you'll always have cabbage every year um, and off four four plants being sown every year you could provide a whole family with cabbages and I've planted quite a few trays here of, I think I've got about 30 cabbages here so I'm going to share a few with friends and family and plant about six this year for myself and then hopefully um, next year I'll sow a few more and then every year on after I'll either take cuttings of the cabbage from any offshoots which also works or saving seeds and sowing seeds and eventually I'll just always have cabbage um, which would be quite cool so that's another way of doing it, growing vertically is using taller varieties and um, generally taller varieties mean older varieties because these are modern um, variety onward pea um, and these are nearly a month older than these peas here. I know these have been um, in a warmer environment for two weeks of their life, but they're still, they've still got amazing roots on them. Um, these really should be planted now because they're going a bit pot bound. Um, but it just goes to show that the, the quality of the seed really impacts the quality of the plant. Um, I didn't think it'd be quite that much, but it is amazing how short these are in comparison to these really nice peas. So I will let you go now. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again next week. I don't know what I'll be talking about next week. <laughs> Bye for now.